Hey guys, it's Chris here. So today we're actually going to work on upgrading the Robo 3D R1. Basically, we want to do those lead screw upgrades that I mentioned in the last video. The first step is going to be taking a backup of the Marlin firmware that's on the Robo, followed by printing out um, basically it's, it's where the X carriage uh, end stops the little switches mount on, it sits on the lead screw. Following that we might actually start pulling the printer apart, getting it ready for the actual lead screw. I'm not sure if we'll get it all done tonight, but uh, we'll see how far we get. If not, we'll continue in the morning. For those of you interested in completing this upgrade yourself, there's actually a thread on the Robo3D forums. I'll leave a link to it in the description, but basically what they've done is provided an alternative to the Robo3D lead screw upgrade kit. This one actually uses uh, solid motor couplings onto the lead screw and initially this is what I was actually going to do for the upgrade. I had purchased these but before actually these came in the mail I'd already ordered some of these. So have a read through the thread anyway. It's a lot of useful information. This is actually what we're going to print out very shortly. And we're going to head over to Matter Control now to take a backup of the firmware. So the only way to do a backup of the firmware is actually to update the firmware to the latest version. When we do the update, it's going to take a backup of the existing firmware. So if there's any issues, uh, I can always just revert back using Matter Control. So under the Controls tab in Matter Control, we've got right down the bottom, Firmware Updates. You can see that I'm actually on Robo3D R1 with the auto bed leveling version 3 and there's an update available so let's go ahead and click update on that creating a firmware backup now it's downloading and now it's updating so I've just rebooted the printer and also reconnected the USB cable going to the laptop I'm just gonna hit connect now connected it's detecting detecting the current firmware you can see that we're up to version 4 so now that we've got a backup of the firmware and we know what the current version is once we do the upgrade and we find that we actually need to do any changes to the firmware we'll know which which compile code to get and modify in Arduino so I've just downloaded these from Thingiverse chucked them over in Cura and now we're going to start a print best to do this print before you actually do the lead screw upgrade or any changes to the physical uh, hardware of the printer just so that you basically can print print something out and you know it's going to work. Alright so that's heating up now. I've chucked a little cover onto it to keep the heat in. It should take about 35 to 45 minutes. So here you guys go, here's a quick time lapse. Okay, so the print's done. You can see that's what it was meant to look like. And that's how it came out. So now that we've got these two printed, we've got our firmware backed up. I'm just letting the printer cool down a little bit before I start pulling it apart. I've already taken out the filament and the spool and put that aside. So I'm just waiting a little bit for it to cool down and then we'll start pulling it apart. So the first thing I need to do is take the top cover off. To do that there's um, four screws, two on either side. And after that I just need to take my LEDs out. I had some LEDs up here. So I just need to remove them so I can take the top cover off. So I got the top cover off and the LEDs. The next step is actually to lift this carriage up, but before I do that, I need to actually disconnect or unscrew the end stop switches. Along with those switches, I just figured out I had to take off these ones here too. So I got the X carriage out. So the next step is going to be unscrewing the rods from the stepper motors. 
So now that the couplers and the lead screw are out, just going to focus on getting the stepper motors out. There's just four screws on either side. Stepper motors are loose now. Because these are actually hardwired in um, on, on the stepper motor side, to actually get them out, I'm going to have to undo all of this cable management. So I think I might actually put the new stepper motors in to the slot and have it ready to pre-wire. As I'm taking these ones out, I'll put the new wires straight in. It'll also let me uh, ensure that I'm putting the, the left side on the, the left board and the right side on the right board on the ramp board. So I've just put both of the new stepper motors in. And I've started working on the wiring. What I've noticed is these actually use a different type of plug to what was provided with the new motors. Um, now these plugs here you would often see on like a computer motherboard. They're quite common. Whereas these ones are more used um, in electronics. This is what came with the, the new stepper motor. So the wiring colors also don't exactly line up. You can see the black and the green are swapped in the new one. We might have to wing it and just make sure that um, what's coming out of the ramps board can line up with um, the pinout for the actual motor. So while trying to figure out the wiring for it, I had to um, get a bit creative. There wasn't any information online about these particular stepper motors that I could easily find. So I've, I've rigged it up and for testing purposes only, I've um, managed to go to working. So I've, I've kept the right hand side one plugged in just so I can see which way it's turning. So yeah, that seems to be working perfectly. I'm going to flip it back over, wire in the right hand side properly. I'm still going to need to solder it all in properly. It was just rigged up at the moment with just um, some electrical tape protecting it. But I'm going to solder it in properly so it's a good permanent fix. I just wanted to show you guys, these actually um, came pre-wired for a producer 3D printer. So you can see the color combination is black, green, blue and red. And the wire, the wire color is actually correct. So if you take the stock Robo 3D color scheme, um, see when it's plugged in, it's got green first. So it's green, black, blue, red. Basically, you don't need to change anything. So long as you match the colors up to what came with the kit, uh, it all works fine. So yeah, just match the colors, change over the plug, and you'll be sweet. Okay, wiring's all sorted. Now it's time to turn it over and put in those little end stop switch brackets that we printed off earlier. And then after that's done, uh, we should be ready to put the X carriage back on and probably fire it up and just make sure uh, the Z axis is moving as it should. And then we'll probably get onto some firmware updates. So the screws that came with the original couplers. They're actually the right size to use in the new brass nut. So yeah, that works pretty well. Now all we got to do is thread these through. On both ends. Okay, I've got them down to approximately the same height. Now I'm going to put the X carriage back on. Something that I uh, thought I should mention is it wasn't actually lining up to the, the carriage, um, these little couplers. Basically, I had the motor already tightened down and that was the issue. There wasn't enough movement in here to line up properly, so I've just loosened them for the time being. I've got to sit down nicely now, so I'm going to tighten the, the motor back up. Hey guys, so it's the next day now. I actually ended up packing up yesterday after doing that last bit. I went until midnight and then basically I was having some issues with the, the new stepper motors. It was almost like it was getting stuck so I wasn't sure if it was how the stepper motor was mounted or if it was um, to do with those couplers that I printed. 
But yeah, so I ended up um, doing some stuff off camera just to find out what I needed to do to fix it. I had to sand down those couplers that I printed a little bit. I guess um, maybe my calibration was a little bit out. It wasn't printing as accurately as uh, the design was, the model was. So I sanded it down. I also ended up adding some washes uh, to where the stepper motor mounts. Basically, if you have a look at the stepper motors here, basically they had too much of an inward angle. They were folding in on each other. So what I did was on the base, on either end, I just added some washes to sort of change the angle that the, that the lead screws were sitting. And that seems to have fixed it for the most part. I did um, sand down, as I mentioned before, the couples that we've got here. So overall, I did give it a quick test as before, and it seems to all be running fine. So the wiring's good, uh, the couplers are good now, and the motor mounts are fine. So the next thing now to do is modify the firmware. So I ended up finding my old firmware files, the one that I actually used to compile it for the E3D version 6. You can download the latest firmware files for the Arduino. Um, they should be on the Robo3D forum, that's where I remember getting them originally. But um, yeah, just have a look on the forum, there should be plenty of links telling you where to go, where to get it. Otherwise it should actually be just on the download section of the main Robo3D website. So anyway, we'll open that up now and I'm going to show you what you need to do to change um, so that they work with the new stepper motors. So if we head over to configuration.h So in here we just need to do a search for default underscore access and I'll bring you to this little configuration setting. So if we look at the instructions provided on that uh, link to the forum page it says we just need to change the default access steps from 2560 which is this one refers to the Z axis change it from 2560 to 400 and that's if you've got TR8 screws so basically just M8 rods if you've got something like TR4 I think you double it so it becomes 800 but yeah we've got TR8 this time so 400 will be perfect for what we're after so mine's set to 2260.7 it's it may seem random to you even though the, the front page said 2560. I've got this setting because I actually was testing something out that was mentioned on the forums. So ignore that. All you need to do is, again if you've got TR8 screws, you just put in 400. You save that and you just need to deploy that. Basically you click the upload button and that should go straight to your Robo3D board. You may just want to make sure that um, under tools and board settings it's set to Arduino Mega or Mega 2560 and the port refers to the port that your Robo3D is plugged into. So once it's all set up you just need to upload, it will compile and it will go straight to the Robo3D board. Okay now that the modified firmware is now on the Robo3D we just want to switch it on and I'm going to head over to Matter Control. And in matter control, you just want to make sure that it connects. Now we're going to control the z-axis, and we just want to make sure that each step, so I've got it set to 10 millimeter steps, each step goes up approximately 10 millimeters. So So yeah, that seems to work properly. Now you just want to make sure that when you're traveling up and down the z-axis, that your end stop switches work as they used to. I had some issues with this so I did it off camera but basically the left hand side uh, end stop switch kept getting engaged when it wasn't hitting the bed. So there you go, my switches seem to work fine now. And the next thing you want to do, you just want to make sure that you've done your bed leveling. Make sure that the new rods line up to the bed properly on, on the x-axis. And once you've done that, you may want to just do a quick test print while the cover's off, just to make sure everything's working as it should before you put the cover back on. I did do one earlier, and it all seems to be running fine now. So I'm going to chuck the cover back on now, and we're going to do a final test print to make sure everything works as it should. Okay, so that print's done, and I can immediately tell that the Z-Wave, the Z-Ribbing, 
is pretty much non-existent. So I'm going to take it off the bed and I'll show you a comparison to what it used to print like and how it's printing now. So here it is. The one on the left is how it used to print. The one on the right is how it prints now. So you can see straight away that the old one, we've got all that Z wave. It goes throughout the print. It's got all these little rib bits throughout the print. And with the new one, it's practically gone. There's um, You can't see it at all. There's some minor imperfections with the new one. But I think that was actually down to the print speed that I was printing it at. Slow it down a little bit, it should come out a bit nicer. So overall it looks like we've solved the issue of the Z-ribbing, which is great. Now my prints will have a better quality than they used to have before. And I won't have to worry about the prints being ruined by, by these ribs. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. And once you're done, you're basically going to have these spare bits now. So the old rods and the couplers. And we've got these where the um, end stop switches used to mount. As well as the two stepper motors. And I had these little brackets um, that basically sat between the threaded rod and the solid rod. So yeah, these are no longer required. So yeah, now we can start making more of these and giving it to people that are after them. Alright, so it looks like the Robo 3D is printing great now. Those uh, new lead screws really did the trick. No more Z ribbing in my print, so that's great news. If there's anything that I left out or you want to know more, just remember to leave a comment down in the comment section below. And all the links to the forum page, the Thingiverse items, and anything else, I'll put in the description down below. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see more 3D printing videos, let me know down in the comments or leave a like. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.